Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of The Film Feast. I'm Sam Donchus, and I will be your host. First off, thank you for watching. This is the first episode of The Film Feast. The Film Feast is basically a weekly film and television news and reviews video blog. I know that was a lot. Weekly film and television video blog. Mostly about news and reviews, although I will also include some trailer analysis, analyses, possible giveaways, uh, oral think pieces. I want to try and mix, mix it up as much as possible so that I'm not just the run-of-the-mill white hipster talking head. Hopefully this is the start of something beautiful. So let's get right into it. Today is the big game! And what does that mean for me? That means movie TV spots, brand new movie TV spots. What do we got this year? We got Need for Speed, we got Noah, we got Neighbors, the one with Seth Rogen and Zac Efron, and uh, what is that, Draft Day? Three Days to Kill? That's, that's two different Kevin or Costner movies with Super Bowl TV spots, and that makes three movies that he's had come out in the first quarter of this year. We also got Captain America, The Winter Soldier, and uh, The Amazing Spider-Man 2! <laughs> but the big one on this list is Transformers Age of Extinction, and that is a movie that we haven't seen anything about so far, and I have no idea what it's going to be about. All I know is that Michael Bay is gonna blow some more shit up, and that might be cool. It, it will be shot with a very nice camera, hopefully. I doubt that he will be filming Transformers 4 with a GoPro or a camera phone. But there is one little problem with this little list of uh, Super Bowl trailers. Guardians of the Galaxy won't have a teaser! Marvel might surprise us, you know? Who knows? There could be a surprise. I get it though, you know, Marvel wants to focus on Captain America the Winter Soldier since it's coming out in a couple of months. It's a, one of their bigger movies. Guardians of the Galaxy, I think they'll be able to nest in the weeks before Captain America or the week before. Usually they, they'll probably come out with the trailer either the week of or the week before Captain America's release. And then they'll be able to kind of nurture it's advertising over the course of the summer. It'll probably get a full trailer um, the, again that week of Captain America's release, and then it'll get another theatrical trailer. Some pr probably in mid June, I would guess. The movie's coming out in August, so expect for a Guardians of the Galaxy teaser eventually in the near future, uh, not too too far away. You know, this is going to be one of Marvel's riskiest ventures. I'm really excited for it. One of my big New Year's resolutions was to not hype as much because that got me in trouble with Pacific Rim last year. So here's hoping. I want it to be good. I, you know, I just, I can't hype it too much because there's the chance that I will get let down because it is going to be a really weird movie and hopefully a really awesome movie. First real story of the week is uh, Elizabeth Banks will be directing Pitch Perfect 2. Now, Elizabeth Banks was a producer on the first Pitch Perfect, and she also had a very small role in it as well, and she will be returning for acting as well. She is replacing Jason Moore, who is the director of Pitch Perfect 1. Anna Kendrick and Rebel Wilson are likely to return, and it's got the same writer, Kay Cannon, as the first one. I liked Pitch Perfect. Um, I think it was a really fun movie. You know, came out back in 2012. Hopefully the second one will have the same energy. Uh, you know, I'm not extremely excited about revisiting the characters or anything like that, or even the concept. I thought it was a really good one-off idea, but you know, money. <laughs> money. And you know, I think if they give it enough energy, you know, even a kind of cash grab sequel can be a really good thing. Next big story, Anthony and Joe Russo are returning for Captain America 3 as directors. Um, and you know, Captain America 2 obviously hasn't even come out yet, 
but um, Marvel was apparently impressed with overall production of the Winter Soldier, um, and it also received some pretty good test screenings as well. That story comes from Variety. Also reported by Variety this last week, Marvel has hired its two writers for Thor 3, uh, Craig Kyle and Christopher Yost. Yost previously uh, had put a polish on Thor 2 The Dark World, and uh, Craig Kyle is the senior vice president of production and development at Marvel. So it's kind of cool that Marvel is really trying to hire within their own company to kind of help build and produce their material. Next up, Paramount has given Christopher Nolan's Interstellar an exemption from their all-digital policy. Pretty much um, that story comes from uh, the Los Angeles Times. The chairman, Rob Moore, vice chairman of uh, Paramount Pictures, spoke last Monday saying, in keeping with the digital direction of the studio's exhibition partners, we have moved forward with the conversion to primarily digital projection. And now, The Wolf of Wall Street was their first movie to be shown completely digitally. It was not shown on film in any commercial theater or any theater that um, was releasing the film for audiences. He also said, um, although we anticipate the majority of the studio's future releases to be ex executed in digital formats across the US, select exemptions will be made. And then later Paramount as a whole went on and went on to say that um, Interstellar would be one of those movies, which makes sense. Christopher Nolan, he doesn't like digital, he likes putting his stuff out there in film format in as many locations as possible. Now this is unfortunate for me, someone who lives in the southeast, because there does not exist a single 70 millimeter projector in the entire southeast. It's, there are none. Um, I don't know about 35 millimeter projectors, but I haven't been able to find one in the general area for a while. It's been at least a decade, or it seems like at least a decade. Olivier Megaton is going to be directing Taken 3, and he was the same guy that directed Taken 2, so, you know, I guess that makes sense. They want to keep keep the ball rolling on a franchise that's picking up steam more and more every day. You know, Liam Neeson is a huge star, especially in action movies lately, and they just want to keep him on board. Um, you know, I remember Liam Neeson saying that he would only return to the, uh, to the films if the script was good, and uh, the script for Taken 2, I don't even remember it. So I don't remember, I don't even remember the script for Taken 1, really. I mean, you know, there was that one solid over-the-phone monologue, and then the rest of the time he's just like, where's my daughter? Who wants to see a Taken 3? I don't really care for one, but I'm sure there are people who want to see Liam Neeson beat the shit out of more people. Although you can see Liam Neeson beating the shit out of more people in non-stop, which will be in theaters eventually. He, he does it on a plane this time. Forrest Whitaker will also be joining the cast of Taken 3, so, there's that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to react to that. You know, Forrest Whitaker, yay! Continuing on with uh, Liam Neeson news, uh, Deadline reports that he is going to star in Martin Scorsese's next film, Silence, along with Andrew Garfield and Ken Watanabe. Now, this project sounds really cool. Not that any Martin Scorsese film sounds lame to me, but this one, um, it's about 17th century Jesuits who want to bring Christianity to Japan. So I think that there's a really good story in that. It's based on a book. I would like to read that book in the near future. It sounds really cool. Um, so there's that. Liam Neeson, Martin Scorsese. Yeah! X-Men producer Lauren Schuler spoke to Empire Magazine recently, said that she wants to do a Gambit movie. Um, starring Channing Tatum. She said to the magazine, I'm dying to do a Gambit movie with Channing Tatum. That doesn't have to be a great big movie. It's a thief in New Orleans. It's a whole different story. He's on board and I have to get the studio on board. How can anyone resist Channing? He's such a sweetheart. I know I can't, Lauren. Channing has basically limitless star power, so I'm my ticket, consider it purchased. Deadline also reports that Kyle Chandler is joining Todd Haynes's Carol. This film also stars Kate Blanchett and Rooney Mara, uh, and Kyle Chandler will play Kate Blanchett's jealous husband. 
the website says that Carol chronicles the burgeoning and tempestuous relationship between two very different women in 1950s New York City. So there's that. Sounds cool. I like Kyle Chandler. I just recently finished up Friday Night Lights. So the more stuff I get to see with Kyle Chandler in it, the better. Okay, next story. There's going to be a Chip and Dale live action slash CGI hybrid film. This was announced by Disney, which is really surprising to me because Disney's never really been one for the live action CGI mixture. You know, just thinking about a Chip and Dale live action CGI hybrid reminds me of one movie. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Apparently this is going to be a Chippendale Rescue Rangers movie, so, you know, I think there will be a good amount of excitement in that, um, in that mixture to at least make something decent, I hope. And now, for the biggest news of the week, arguably, I think this is the biggest news of the week. Jesse Eisenberg has been cast as Lex Luthor in the Man of Steel sequel which is still being called Batman vs. Superman. And Jeremy Irons was cast as Alfred, Bruce Wayne's butler. This story came out on Friday and literally lit the internet on fire. It was like, I've never seen so many people, I haven't seen this many people angry about a casting since, since Ben Affleck was cast as Batman. I personally don't have a problem with Jesse Eisenberg. I think this is actually a bold casting choice. And I'm real. I mean, I'm now more excited to see the movie than I was before, which wasn't a lot. I was not excited for Batman vs Superman. You know, Jeremy Irons. He's an extremely accomplished actor, and um, at first I was like, oh, you know, that's really kind of an underplayed role for him, isn't it? You know, Alfred. I mean, you could say the same about Michael Caine getting cast, but you know, over the course of three films, you you can't say that Michael Caine didn't do a fabulous job as uh, Alfred. But going back, going back to. Um, Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor, you know, I think that they're trying to tackle the whole idea of Lex Luthor being a prodigy child. Uh, Zack Snyder said about Eisenberg after casting him, Lex Luthor is often considered the most notorious of Superman's rivals, his unsavory reputation preceding him since 1940. What's great about Lex is that he exists beyond the, con the confines of the stereotypical nefarious villain. He's a complicated and sophisticated character whose intellect, wealth, and prominence position him as one of the few mortals able to challenge the incredible might of Superman. Having Jesse in the role allows us to explore that interesting dynamic and also take the character in some new and unexpected directions. Uh, then he said of Jeremy Irons being casted as Alfred. As everyone knows, Alfred is Bruce Wayne's most trusted friend, ally, and mentor, a noble guardian and father figure. He is an absolutely critical element in the intricate infrastructure that allows Bruce Wayne to transform himself into Batman. It is an honor to have such an amazingly seasoned and gifted actor as Jeremy Iron Irons taking on the important role of the man who mentors and guides the guarded and nearly impervious facade that encapsulates Bruce Wayne. It's a big story, one that is going to probably continue to be talked about um, throughout the next couple of weeks leading up into the film's production and ultimately its release and then further and further and forever on into oblivion. We can't know right now. We simply cannot know and there's no point in arguing and bickering about it because the movie hasn't come out yet. The movie hasn't even started shooting yet. So, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. In television news, there's nothing really to talk about. You know, there's some minor rumblings about the uh, Constantine pilot that NBC is putting together. I think it just got a writer, so that's cool. If you're excited about the Constantine television show. Well, that's it for this week in film and television news. Again, thank you for watching the first episode of The Film Feast. It, it's very much appreciated that you watched um, and that you keep watching. There will be another one next week, you know, barring natural disaster or something happening, just something happening in my life can easily deter an episode, you know. But seriously, again, thank you. And if you like the video, you can like it on YouTube, subscribe uh, to the channel, and hopefully we'll have more content for you next week. I plan on having these out on a weekly basis every Saturday night. This one's coming out on Sunday because it's hard. 
It's hard. This is this is something that I've been trying to pull together for the last couple of years now, actually, um, and I only now just have the time and equipment to do it. So here here is the 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 product of all that all that planning. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I hope you join me next time for the film feast.